Welcome back, everybody. Oh, hello. I am Gyroshan, and uh, yeah, today we're going to be doing another sort of meta analysis of a deck. Um, if you don't know, if you're new, uh, I do these meta analysis of the deck. I do a deck profile. And then I also have a, like an, a battle IRL with this deck with a friend of mine. Um, so hopefully by the time that this comes out, whether it's like a day or two after or sometime around it, uh, you should be able to find the other videos uh, of this deck. So the deck that we are gonna be talking about today is, uh, is this deck, Blastoise and Piplup. Now, water decks have not had a good time as of late. Um, I just don't think there's not, like Aqua Patch rotated. There's not really a lot of energy acceleration for water decks for the most part. So this whole time that I've been playing, like that's, um, what is that, Unbroken Bonds Forward? You just never really see water decks, unless you'd say like a Quagmag, really. But those decks are definitely not tier one and they suffer from a lot of inconsistency. There's a lot of setup involved. But, but now with Blastoise and Piplup, I think we finally have a very viable water deck. And um, not only water deck, but just a very viable deck in general. So. I'll just explain to you what Blastoise and Piplop is, and then we'll sort of get into the um, ethos of this deck, if you will. So Blastoise and Piplop has two attacks. The first attack is really what you're angling for, but the second, its GX attack, is also very good. So the first attack is called Splashmaker. It's uh, two water, and uh, I'll just see that. It's two water and one colorless. And the attack reads, uh, you may attach up to three water energy from your hand, to your Pokemon in any way you like. So you can attach one to a, three different ones, three to one, two and one, doesn't matter. You can attach it to this one if you want as well, not just your bench. Um, if you do that, heal 50 damage from the Pokemon for each card that you attached in this way. So if you heal, if you just attach one to three different Pokemon, you can heal 50 damage each. If you attach all three to one Pokemon, you can heal 150 damage. Now, 150 healing for an attack is insane that's crazy like you are potentially negating the uh damage done to this pokemon by a bunch of different decks guardian 150 done don't need it lucario melmetal 150 done don't need it the new rushes are uh, new charizard and breaks in 180 you only got 30 damage left it's fine it's almost nothing so you can imagine that the whole concept behind this deck now is um, getting one of these powered up early, usually, and then just using this to both accelerate energy and just heal yourself up. You're a super tanky deck. You're like, I'm gonna deal out a consistent amount of damage every turn once this is done, and I'm gonna make it really hard for you to knock something out. You're basically gonna be sat there thinking, I'm gonna have to Oko this thing if I actually wanna get through it. So that's sort of the idea behind this deck is getting one of these set up early game, using it to accelerate energy and making yourself impossible to kill without an Oko. So the second attack, which is also relevant, is Bubble Launcher GX. Um, and you could use it just with two water and a colorless, but what you really want is at least five water energy and then whatever. You need to have three extra water energy to do the extra effect. And what that extra effect is, it does 250 damage and leaves your opponent's Pokemon paralyzed. Now, 100 plus paralysis is not bad. 250 plus paralysis is very, very good. Uh, now, with that attack, you're obviously not accelerating energy, but unless they have a switch card in hand, you're sat there basically like, okay, late game, you do something like that. Not much they can do. They're stuck in the active. They're gonna die next turn anyway, so you sort of can set yourself up with a whole free turn in that respect. So that's Blastoise and Piplup in a nutshell. What are the other cards that really make this deck work? Well, obviously we've got to accelerate energy. And I think one really good card for doing that is this Kyogre. Now, you could use the second attack on Kyogre that does 130 damage. Could be relevant in certain matchups like Malamar maybe. But really it's first attack for one colorless is attach two water energy from your discard to one of your Pokemon. Now, obviously you need to get your water energy into the discard. We have a few ways to do that, which I'll sort of explain a couple of those options, but 
This is your acceleration engine. Get a couple of energy into the discard, use this, put two energy on a Blastoise and Piplup or another Pokemon, and then uh, all you need for the next turn is one attachment and getting this thing out of the active. And uh, this deck has lots of ways to get something out of the active. It has supporters, it has switches, it has escape boards. You're good. And when you see this deck profile, you'll see what I mean by like, you'll be able to get it out of the active most often. Um, so yeah, that Kyogre is a really important facet of this deck. I think I've seen a couple of Blastoise and Piplup builds that don't have it. Maybe those will work. It's hard to say, it's still early days. But uh, I'm really liking the Kyogre because it's a one prizer, so you're happy to give it up if you need to. And if they knock you out, cool. I don't even have to worry about getting them out of the active. So this is the second card that's really important. And the third card is, you're playing a water deck, right? Well, what's a big part of the meta right now? GXs. What did GXs have a hard time getting through? Keldeo. Keldeo is, uh, in my opinion, a critical, critical component in, um, in this deck. Because if you're up against a certain type of deck, Mewtwo and Mew, for instance, um, the new Charizard deck, uh, a bunch of different kinds of decks, you can basically wall them out with this. So the idea is you gotta power something up. Depending on what you're playing against, you can either choose to power up a Keldeo or you can choose to power up a Blastoise and Piplup. Um, if you are feeling like your Blastoise and Piplup won't get one hit KO the next turn, especially with Great Catcher in the format, then yeah, power this guy up, attach, get some more energy onto the board. Basically, this is gonna help you flood the board with energy and make it really difficult to take you out. But if you're really worried, like say your opponent went first, they got a few energy on and you're like, they might have a great catcher in hand. Maybe they'll just bring up my Blastoise and Piplup and uh, Oko it with like a 300 attack or something like that. Then you probably put it onto the Keldeo, hedge your bets and say, I'm okay taking the slow road to get the Blastoise and Piplup powered up. And yeah, if you have a great catcher and that's and you put this on the bench, maybe you don't even put this on the bench. I had a couple of games last night where I didn't. I just waited because I was playing Mewtwo and Mew. But yeah, so this Keldeo is a really critical card for um, giving you some extra time because yes, while Kyogre does help energy acceleration uh, and Blastoise and Piplup helps a lot with that, the deck can still be kind of slow compared to welder-based engine. It's just, that's the reality of this format. Um, so sometimes you need something just to pump the brakes on the uh, on the game a little bit and Keldeo GX is really critical for doing that Now there are three other cards that I think are critical to this deck um, So there's a bunch of other cards in the deck that I'm not really going through But these three cards are pretty critical to the deck. The first one is Tag Call Tag Call is absolutely broken in this deck because a lot of what you need to do what you need every turn are tag teams, whether that's a Blastoise and Piplup or the tag team supporters. And Tag Call lets you go get any card that says tag team. Tag team supporters and Pokemon. So you have a card that can search out the supporters that you need. And uh, it just so happens that uh, those supporters are what make this deck really work in the long run. So let's talk about two of those supporters. You have the first one, which is even more healing, and what I was talking about with Kyogre, Switch. You have Mallow and Lana. Let's see if I can get that in focus. Now, Mallow and Lana, for nothing else other than just playing it, you can simply switch your active with a bench. Kind of like a Tate and Liza. But the additional benefit of this is if you discard two cards, then you can heal 120 damage from the Pokemon that you're switching out of the active, out of the active. I know early on there was a lot of speculation that it was the Pokemon going into the active, which is really weird. But no, it's the one switching out of the active. And that's huge because, you know, maybe you get something set up and you um, need to get it out of the active. You don't have energy in hand to do any healing. Well, Mallow and Lana gets you out of there, heals 120 damage, so your tank is ready to go uh, in a future turn. And if you have multiple Pokemon set up now because of the Blastoise and Piplup, that Mallow and Lana, you can just sort of, a couple of turns in a row, just get back and forth like that, heal a bunch of damage, you're good to go. So Mallow and Lana is a critical piece. And the other critical piece 
um, which is amazing in this deck, is Misty and Lorelei. Now, Misty and Lorelei is amazing mostly for, actually it's normal effect, but the secondary effect is really good late game. The first effect basically allows you to search your deck for three water energy and put them into your hand. Just straight up, it's like energy spinner if you go second on your first turn as a supporter. It's great. Um, and the reason it's great and the reason it's perfect is you need energy in hand for Blastoise and Piplup to attach and heal. This just says, I'm gonna go get those three energy, I'm gonna attack, and I'm gonna heal 150 damage. So this is basically energy acceleration engine support plus healing support. Uh, it's absolutely busted. Now, like I said before, tag call is incredibly important in this deck. You have lots of tag team Pokemon and supporters. So the fact that you can go grab either one of these on any given turn with one card for free is what makes this deck really, really good. I've played a bunch of people with this deck and um, I'm trying to remember, I don't know if I've lost any matches with this. Now, I say that and I'm gonna test this deck a little bit later with a friend for like the video, uh, but thus far, this deck has not lost a match. It has played up against Mewtwo and Mew. It has played up against Reshiram, the new one. It has played up against Lucario Melmetal. It just wrecks them. So, uh, yeah. Now, in terms of this deck, we've sort of talked about a bunch of the cards that make it up. The idea behind the deck, which is like energy acceleration and healing, switching. That's really a big part of it. Let's talk about this deck's um, weaknesses more than anything and understand how it is in the meta right now. Like what decks it's maybe good against, what decks it struggles. Um, I think in terms of its weakness, it's a tough one. Um, because you need cards in hand for a lot of these different things, I think this deck uh, could suffer from a little bit of um, stamp vulnerability. Um, because, you know, if you don't have any water energy in hand, you get stamped down to two or three cards, no way to get water energy in hand either, then yeah, like you're not gonna be doing the healing. You're not gonna be doing energy acceleration. Um, so yeah, stamp can definitely be a problem for this deck. Uh, but the good news is you do have that Kyogre. So if something does get knocked out and you have a Kyogre on the bench, the next turn you can use it to power up another Pokemon for the following turn. And depending on what you're up against, um, if you have your Keldeo down, which you should always try to get one of those down, then yeah, you can like survive then for another turn, allow yourself to build up a hand again. So it can recover from stamp, but immediately after getting stamp, it can sometimes be a problem. Um, outside of that, I mean, it's a water deck, right? So naturally you're gonna run a little bit slower I have found that there are times when this deck has some clunky hands um, where you're just like, I, I don't know what to do with this hand. I, this is bad. Um, you'll see in the deck profile, there's a few different cards that I've also included like uh, Jirachi to sort of help you with that. Um, Cause this deck needs the ability to dig into the deck a little bit, find its pieces when it needs it. But it is not nearly as reliant on any one supporter or card as a lot of other decks out there. And for me, I think that's what makes this deck really um, powerful, is that you have a little bit of optionality in terms of what you want to use with this deck. Now in terms of, um, so those are the weaknesses, slow, reset stamp, um, you know, vulnerable. In terms of the decks that it's gonna probably be good against in the format, I think it has a pretty favorable matchup against most decks. Um, the only ones I could see you really struggling with are maybe greens focused decks that can sort of control. Again, that new Charizard greens build is gonna be so good. So if they're able to reset stamp you, Jesse and James you, you have nothing in hand and you have no way of getting more stuff in hand, um, that could be a problem. That could be a real problem with this deck. Um, and, you know, additionally, another problem with this deck in particular is that, yes, while you can heal, if you're up against something that can Oko you with non-GX Pokemon, um, that can be a problem because you have some, you know, you've given up with these two cards alone, five prizes out of your six. 
So if you're going up against non-GXs and they can do a decent amount of damage really quickly, um, they can run through this deck probably faster than you can get set up. And the healing doesn't matter at that point because they're one hit KOing you. So those are the two things. Non-GX decks um, that this deck might struggle against. But luckily, most non-GX decks are fairly rogue. Um, and then that Charizard, the new Green Zard, is potentially difficult because it's very hand disruptive. And this, this deck requires you to ni have a nice hand. Not a huge hand, but like, you know, a, a consistent hand. Um, so yeah, that is sort of this analysis of the deck. I think this deck also does very well against Malamar. Um, so if you are annoyed with Malamar, tired of seeing Malamar, I think the healing on this really makes this deck a great option for Malamar. If you really, really hate Malamar and you just want to get it out of here and, and be done with it, you could put a Magikarp and Waylord in this deck and it's got enough energy acceleration later in the game where you could maybe get off that GX for 100 damage to all the bench. I don't have it in. I think that's a little too um, expensive for this deck. But uh, if you really hate Malamar, yeah, that's probably the way to do it. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let me know what you think about this deck. Definitely check out the other videos. I have a, a deck profile uh, that should be out sometime around now. And then a video where I play uh, this deck against an unknown deck at this point uh, with my uh, friends so you can sort of see it in action. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you would change to the deck. I think this is a very like early concept. so. There will certainly be cards that don't make it in if this deck actually goes to a regionals. Maybe the whole style of this deck changes, but I do think that the core, Blastoise and Piplup, is gonna be a really good deck, honestly. Like tier two, maybe tier one, to be frank. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Uh, and I will catch you in another video. Carpe awesome.